Okay, in this video for the Roku, we're just going to basically show you how you can set it up from scratch. Um, when you get your Roku, okay, you'll plug it into the mains and you'll hook it up to your TV and things like that, and that's fine. But you have to go through a few other stages before you can actually get it working and activate it so you can access all its features, okay? And if you don't do these, your Roku just simply won't work. It won't let you do uh, anything you want it to do until you have all these steps completed, okay? So the first thing we'll deal with is what it's going to go through. So the first thing is it's going to try and connect itself to the internet. The next stage then is it's going to check its servers, basically its own servers, um, to see if there's any additional software or updates, you know, um, for the Roku itself. And the third section then is it's going to activate your Roku, okay? And what that wants to do basically at that stage is it wants to tie that box to you. So it knows if you're adding channels that later on that might cost money or something like that, that it's you that's actually doing it and basically you get billed for it and things like that. But an awful lot of the channels are free. So, I mean, there's plenty to be working away with on the Roku without even adding the pay channels. Okay. So the first thing is we're going to deal with connecting to the internet. And the thing about this is there's two actual Roku's currently available in the UK and Ireland. And I'm talking now in March 2012. There's the lower cost one that only does or has wireless access on it, okay, for your broadband. And the more expensive one has wired and wireless, okay. Now, there's pros and cons to both. Obviously, from if you're watching the likes of Netflix on your Roku and things like that, you're probably better off to be using it with wired broadband, okay. Um, things uh, with wireless things can interfere and things like that, especially over a long distance. Um, so just to be aware of that. But you know, the the one that's wireless only, it is cheaper. And in my own house, I've tested that and it actually works quite well, but it's just something to consider when you're actually doing it, okay? Now, the thing is, uh, what we'll do, I at the moment I have uh, got the, the Roku that actually has the wired and wireless plugged in. That's the more expensive one, okay? So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to go through the setup process here, okay? So the first thing it says is press OK to continue. And we'll do that. Now it's going to ask me, am I going to connect to a wireless network or a wired network? Now, okay, for demonstration purposes of this video, I'm going to do the wired one, but I'm just going to go into wireless first and show you what you would have to do. So it's looking for a wireless network and it's picking up a couple there. So if you, if you showed, um, you know, if this was your house, you would have your own number there. This thing, what the numbers you can see there are called an SSID. And if you clicked into that um, and pressed OK, it would ask you to enter your network password. And this is usually written on the underneath of the router that you might have in your hall, you know, for the broadband or something like that. If it's not, you'll have to contact your um, broadband provider and ask them how you can find out which it is. But an awful lot of them these days, they have a little sticker underneath it with the network password. And you can use the up, down, left and right and things like that, um, you know, to do the password. And when you're finished then, you simply go down to connect and you press OK and it'll connect to your wireless and you can continue on from that point. But I'm just going to exit out with that for now. So I actually have it plugged into my broadband, so I'm going to go wired. Okay, so it just goes through there, detecting Ethernet connection, connecting to your local network, connecting to the internet. So it just takes a few moments. Okay, so the next section then is just, you tell it basically where you are. So we're in Europe and i just find Ireland there and Ireland and you can pick whatever clock format you want, okay? And then you arrow down and go next. Now, this is the, this is the most important thing here now, okay? When you, when you first plug in your Roku and you go through all the stages here, what you're going to get at the end of it is this activation code, okay? So the code changes every single time that you turn on the machine, okay? Uh, you know, just say I chose not to uh, register it now. The next time I turn on the machine to go and do it, that um, code would be different, okay? But the most important thing here is what you have to do is you need to go to your laptop or computer and you need to type in roku.com forward slash link and it'll bring you to a page where you type that code in, okay? And what that does is, is the first part of the activation um, for your Roku. After you're finished, after you type in that code on your laptop or PC, the next page that will come up will ask you to register, 
okay so you will go in there on the row crew website and you will just basically create an account so you know you can call yourself uh, you know just say your name's paddy murphy you give your name address and um, phone number things like that and your email the, the thing about it is when you're in there you have to give them your credit card details okay now they don't take any charge off it but why why you give them them details is at some stage you may want to add a channel onto this roku that is a paid channel and if it's a paid channel they need to be able to bill you and if they have your credit card on file you can be automatically billed but you will not receive any bill or any charge for any free channel which there's loads of with the roku or they just will not um, charge you indiscriminately for using it or anything like that. It's only if you buy a paid channel on the Roku. The other thing to be aware of is when you're registering the Roku, now I'm speaking specifically about Ireland here, the UK have no problem with this because they actually have postcodes. If this is something we just noticed ourselves when we went to register, if you go to register on the Roku website, and you put in your name and address here in Ireland, and as you know yourself, we've no postcodes. If you leave the postcode blank, it won't allow you to register. So how I got it to register me was I put in six zeros. I just, you know, that was my postcode, and it accepted me straight away. So it's just to be aware of that. Um, uh, it'll just make the process go smoother for you. And that's it. So after you do that registration, uh, yeah, sorry, after you enter that code on the Roku website and then you register yourself as a user and you input your credit card details, um, again, I'd say you're not charged for doing that. It's only if you buy a paid channel at a later date. But after you have that done, after you have the code entered and you register, and that's successfully registered, you can see on the screen there, it says screen updates automatically upon activation. When you have that done, that screen will change. It all happens automatically as long as you're connected to the internet. And it knows that box you have now is tied to you and you own it. So, and that's basically it. Now, just another thing that you might notice that I didn't show in this video, I wasn't able to show because I have it done already, is when you first plug in your Roku, you're probably going to have to do um, a firmware update, okay? And this will do it automatically. What it'll do is it's just going to download software from the Roku servers and install it on your machine. It takes maybe a couple of minutes, but it, it all is done automatically. So just be patient and it'll definitely, it, you know, the, the updates are there for your benefit, you know, to increase functionality and things like that. So if it does come up for you, which it probably will if you buy a brand new one, um, just let it happen and then just wait for it to tell you what to do next and things like that. But basically this video shows you all the main points as regards um, registering the Roku itself. Okay, so that's basically it from beginning to end, how you can activate your Roku.